Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the selective color filter in QImage Ultimate's image editor. I'm going to bring up this photo of this hibiscus here by double clicking on it. That brings up the image editor. In the image editor in the upper right there's a tab that says cell color. That's where we make selective color changes. On this tab, when we don't have any filter, we see all ones in this table. And that's basically telling you that all of the input values are being multiplied by 1.0, which gives you the same output as you have on the input. Now these rows here represent colors that you can change, meaning that if you make a change in this top row across here, you're making a change to red colors in the photo. Yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and neutrals are not going to be changed if you change values in this row. And these are basically multipliers. You have your red change, green change, and blue change. And you really should know a little bit about color and RGB values and what RGB values make what color for example, equal red and green with a lower blue will give you yellow. Uh, so it helps to know that when you're dealing with this table. If you want to increase the red, then you can increase this value here. 1.5 or 1.1 will give you a higher red output than you have on the input. Uh, 0.5 will give you 50% in the red, and so on. So I'd like to liven up the sky a little bit right here, but first I want to see what color that is. And just to verify that that's cyan and not blue, I'm going to click this dropper and then click on the color I'm interested in, and that would be the blue of the sky here. And QImage Ultimate verifies for us by underlining the C, telling us that this color here is closer to cyan than anything else in this table. So now we're interested in making changes in this row to um, modify the sky a little bit. Well, pretty obviously I want to add more blue here. So that's an obvious change. I'm going to go over to the blue change here and let's just enter something like 1.5. Um, so basically for cyan colors QImage Ultimate is going to multiply whatever's in the blue channel by 1.5. So it takes the original value, multiplies by 1.5, and that's what you get in your filtered version here. And you can see the sky is starting to come to life already. Uh, let's even go a little bit further here. Put a 2 in there. So 2 times my blue. And if that's a little bit purple for your taste here, uh, you have to remember that even though this is cyan colors that we're fooling with here, there's still going to be a red component in most cases because it's difficult to get a pure, fully saturated cyan. So the thing that's causing this sky to be a little bit purple is the fact that there's some red in the sky some residual red in the red channel. So let's take that out. I'm going to say zero. And you can see what that does. That gives it a, a more sky blue color. Now if we click OK, let's watch the image here in the background. And we've really livened that sky up. We've gotten a nice blue sky here to go with our red hibiscus. Now this is pretty simple. You can see that you can basically pick the row of the color that you want to change and by changing the cyan row here we've only changed cyan colors from the original image we haven't touched the red of the flower, the green of the leaves and the brown of the stem and so forth those are left completely alone and in fact if we right click to get up the preview and zoom out a little bit and hold this green button to toggle before and after. You can see the sky, the dull before and the blue after, 
but the flower is not affected at all. So that's how you can target colors and give them changes simply by putting multipliers in here. And once again, the, everything else in the table is 1. So you take the input, multiply it by 1.0, and that gives you the output. So none, nothing else is being changed. It's just this cyan row we've changed. We've said, take, an, take any residual red that we might have out, multiply that by 0, I'll leave the green channel alone, and boost the blue channel by two times. Now we can even do something a little bit more interesting. We can do some creative things, change things around a little bit. I can see that this flower is red. So if I change things in this top row here, it's going to be affecting the flower. Now what if I wanted to change this flower to yellow just for an effect? Well, as we're scrolling our mouse over the flower here, let's look at the current color down here as we scroll the mouse. We can see that we've got, let's just stop there, 165 red, 35 green, and 49 blue. So if we wanted yellow, we want to take this green value up so that it matches the red, because we know that red and green together make yellow, and it's the green channel that's that needs to be brought up to make that yellow. Well, let's go up here and let's put the input red in the output green channel. Let's do this. 1, comma, 0, comma, 0. And what that does is it will take 1 times the input red channel, 0 times the input green, and 0 times the input blue, and put it in the green channel for the output. So we've basically done some channel switching here. We've taken the, we've left the red channel alone on the output, left the blue channel alone, and we've taken the red channel and stuffed it into the green channel. So our red and green channels are going to be equal on the output, and what that gives us is a yellow flower. So hopefully these Tips will help you get started on making some changes to selective colors in your image. You can see how we've uh, livened the sky up here. Uh, we've made a yellow hibiscus. Um, and you can just use the numbers in this table here. A lot of people shy away from this table because it's numbers and it's not sliders or uh, check boxes, but they're just numbers. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, go in here, make some changes, uh, experiment with it a little bit, and you can do a lot with this. Uh, the only real trick here, the, these are pretty obvious where you're taking multipliers and you're multiplying the input by a number to get the output. The only tricky one is this one here, and that's when you specify three values, you're actually taking multipliers on the three input channels and putting it into one channel for the output. So hopefully that makes sense and you can experiment with this a little bit and see what you get and do some creative changes to your images. Don't forget to click the done here when you're done editing and that will save your filter. If you double click on it again of course, it opens the same filter back up with the, the changes that you've made. If you want to go back to the original, you want to make further changes, uh, go back to the original by just clicking clear and then done, and you're back to the original. Remember that QImage Ultimate does not overwrite your original image or save another copy, it's just putting a filter on top of this image. So you can go back anytime, change these, and just click done. So. That's it for this video. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.